This is my Rivet 608 which is now fully restored and functioning as it was originally and I've one or two pieces still to make for it. Um, I have got um, some new screws to cut for the little bevel bezel that runs around here and the screws are absolutely tiny. They're um, equivalent of M2 I suppose. Um, they uh, are just over two millimeters in diameter and a 52 threads per inch um, but the root seems to cut those okay and I've got some other screws which I want to use for the gib I'm going to replace the ones that are on there with these with the hex head on so that um, I can tighten them with a small spanner rather than with a screwdriver and also I shall probably fit the um, DRO to the back of the cross slide here so that if these are fitted like that I can offset the, the DRO from there uh, with minimum alteration and I can keep the original screws obviously so that's that. Now when um, cutting screws on the rivet um, the half nut is engaged with this lever under here and you have to push this lever across here underneath and what that does is it locks this lever so that you can't engage it so you can't engage the feed through the gearbox inside here once you're doing thread cutting you're using the top thread um, feed screw only and also at the bottom is this which allows you to free off the gear train when cutting gears when cutting your threads and there is a dial thread indicator but actually um, I'm actually not going to be using that very much so, and the reason for that is uh, because um, I'm going to have constant engagement of the thread. I found that that's the easiest way to do it. Now, the other thing is, um, I've got on here my um, tool post that I've recently made. It's um, a retracting tool post. And I found that that works absolutely brilliantly. That's really good. So in combination with everything else on the lathe, uh, thread cutting is actually quite easy. Um, I know a lot of people are daunted by thread cutting. Um, now I've got underneath here, just turn this back a bit. There's a gearbox, which gives me two speed gears there. I have to be a bit careful that I don't engage um, fast speed when I'm doing thread cutting by mistake so I put a little wooden stop in there just while I'm thread cutting so that it doesn't engage it and then down below here I've got a, a frequency drive and that enables me to switch into reverse by pressing the green button uh, while it's running it then stops the motor and then puts it into reverse which is quite handy so the, pre the uh, method of operation is to constantly engage the gear train uh, move this lever into drive with this lever forward and then when this is moved across it's retracted and then that's moved to, to its brake position and then this is switched into reverse and um, then this is back to that, the, the drive position and it then moves back to where you start from and that system seems to work really quite well. Uh, the gearbox settings for tooth cutting are very straightforward, for gear thread cutting are very straightforward 
I've set up here to cut uh, 52 teeth on that setting and they're marked on a little scale here there's 13, 26, 52 and 104 threads per inch and then underneath this is the drive for um, the gears for forward and reverse and this is the drive that engages uh, the normal forward position and the rivet like these rather nice um, sliding gears um, and that runs through that gear there and the alternative is to move this in and um, put it on the smaller gear but at the moment that's set for that gear which is correct and there's a pair of gears underneath this cover where I can slide them in and out to provide extra gears as well hence where the um, each one of these on the gearbox here shows as four different speeds for each for each position um, because there's the two positions of this wheel here and the two positions of the wheels behind there. Um, the other thing to remember is that behind here you have to engage these two together via this sliding gear that's and use for thread cutting. Right, so to engage the thread cutting, that lever comes up. I'm just make sure I've got that. That's absolutely. That's it. Onto the uh, engage into the thread. And I can disengage that. So if I start the lathe up now, just put it into reverse so it doesn't go towards the chuck. So that goes away from the chuck in reverse. I'm ready now to start cutting the thread. Um, it is very small, I can't really magnify it any more than that, but anyway, let's have a go and see what we can see. Dab of oil on that. Threads nice and smooth.
threads look pretty close to being cut. Just check to make sure that's run right up the outside. That looks good. <coughs> Yep, that looks good as well. That thread should be cut. I'll just see if I can get the camera down a little bit closer just so you can see the threads. I know I've got a problem in focusing down as low as that. As small as that. There we go. That's 2.3 millimeters or thereabouts, and I'm well pleased with that. So I've got another four to go. <clears throat>